Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Side Talk. So, you guys should know what Side Talk is by now, but if you're new and you don't know what Side Talk is, Side Talk is just a platform for me to really come on and talk to my guests about everyday topics. So, The topic that I'm talking about today is, are we spoiling our children? And for this episode, I have a guest. Her name is Portia, and um, she has a podcast. You're going to learn all about her. But before I get into the podcast, I wanted to bring on a very special guest to kind of get their feedback on this topic. So please welcome Hallie to the podcast. Hi, everybody. So Hallie is my daughter, and I asked her to, you know, come on the podcast and answer some questions, honestly. So this is not pre-rehearsed. I didn't tell her what the questions were. I just said that I wanted her to participate, and I was going to ask her some questions, and I wanted her to be honest with her answers. So Hallie, welcome to the podcast. Is this your first time being on a podcast? Yes. Okay. Are you excited? Yes, very excited. (laughs) Okay. All right. So the first question I want to ask you is how old are you? I am 10 years old. Okay. And do you always get what you want in terms of like stuff, things, um, material things, books, paper, clothes, um, a phone case, whatever it is that you desire. Do you feel like you always get everything that you want? Not generally everything, but when it's something that I ask my parents for, sometimes I get it and sometimes I don't get it. It depends on how reasonable it is. Okay. All right. So do you think your parents should buy you everything that you want? No, I don't think so. Why? Because I believe that then I would become a snobby brat. You think so? So you don't think you're a snobby brat now? I feel like sometimes I can be a little bit rude and I'm trying to work on that. Okay, but what about... All right, so let me give you some context, all right? So these are signs that you have a spoiled child. They are never satisfied with what they have. Instead of expressing their gratitude for what they have, they they are more focused on getting the next thing. Do you feel like you can be like that sometimes? Yes. Okay. Um, they think the world revolves around them. They aren't concerned with other people. So they think the world revolves around them. They aren't concerned with what other people have going on or what their needs and wants are. They just really focused on themselves. Do you feel like you can be like that sometimes? No, as I've heard is that I'm a very caring person that I always help people when they're in need. Okay. So when you think the world revolves around you, let me just give you a brief example of what that means. Mommy, I need to go and get this book right now. I, I need I need it because I, I, I need to get it. Meanwhile, you don't realize that mommy has to cook dinner, um, get ready for work tomorrow, do a podcast, prepare, just do other things. But Holly wants this right now. Then in that instance, I think that sometimes I can be like that if my mom has a lot of things to do and I want something that instance, then sometimes I can be like that and it could be really aggravating to my mom. Yes. And they're sore losers. Do you ever feel like you're a sore loser? Yes. Okay. So now you know some traits of a spoiled child and you know the things that you need to work on. Do you ever feel left out if someone at school talks about having something that you don't have? Um, Sometimes if it's like one of 
if it's like a really so-called popular kid at my school and they're talking about like oh guys i got a new um i don't know like a new notebook or like these super expensive pens um so stuff that like i might care about it like really like makes me feel jealous i guess but i don't really i try not to show my jealousy okay so why do you feel jealous because, I mean, like, that's a common human trait for a person to have. If they have, see something that somebody that they know has something they, and, they, and they've wanted that for a while, they might feel jealous at them. And sometimes they might show their hatred at them, but I always try not to show it if I feel, like, jealous at that person. Okay, so jealousy is not something that we have to feel, just so you know right Mm -hmm. it's okay to see something that someone else has and feel like oh man I wish I had that but not really be jealous of that person because they have it because um things can always be attained right so there's no reason to feel jealous um or envious of that person or I'll feel like upset that that I might have wanted, like, I don't know, like these micron pens that I really want, Mm -hmm. that person just got them because they asked their parents one time for it, and they, like, get it immediately. Like, I might feel like, oh, wow, I really wish I I, I was them right now. Like, I wish I had those new micron pens. Oh, okay. Well, I do appreciate a trait that you do have is that you did come home and tell me about some pens that someone had. And what you did was you went on Amazon and looked for a lesser expensive brand of those pens and you went ahead and purchased that with your own money. So I commend you on doing things like that being frugal and you know knowing that hey these pens are super expensive I'm I know my parents are not buying me that and I don't want to spend my money on that so what's the next best thing so that's really good it's a good trait to have at such a young age so I do want to commend you on that and share that with the audience thank you so do you feel like it's important to save your money yes I feel like it's very important to save your money I had a chat with my cousin about how if she wants, she wanted a new dollhouse. And I said, well, you need to save up your money for that. And you can't just spend it recklessly. Recklessly, honey. Recklessly. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Right, okay. And she she started saving up her money. and And she has been doing more chores around her house. And she is already, like, has $50, so I'm really proud of her for that. Awesome. Do you know anyone who doesn't live the way you do? Like, at school, do you know anyone who might not be able to um, get a cell phone or um, get money for doing chores around the house or, you know, able to eat lunch at, at school every day without worrying about the cost of lunch or getting snacks is there anyone that you know that lives that life and you don't have to say their name or anything you just say yes or no yes okay so you know people that are a little bit less fortunate than you yes i do and well how do you feel about that i feel like i wish i could help them with their situation really you do Mm mm-hmm Oh, wow. That's really nice. So do you think, do you think that you are spoiled? I feel like sometimes I can be spoiled, but I feel like sometimes I just get overexcited or over my head with myself. And I don't think about how my parents are because I don't know what's going on. Right. So you just know that you want something and you know, but yeah, you're not. and I'll be like annoyed if I my parents say like, oh, we're not going there. Right. Okay. That's fair. That's honest. Um so do you know what charity and um volunteer work is? Yes. Okay. And how did you learn about that? I learned about uh, I learned about that from school. Really? That's it? Yeah. <laughs> and um I also like to look up a lot of stuff so I also kind of learned that from 
looking up stuff, doing some stuff, and I've also kind of always known about it, volunteering work. Okay, so do you remember Girl Scouts? Yes, Girl Scouts. We would, every every once in a while, we would go to, like, one of the parks, and we would clean up there, and we would do, like, a bunch of volunteer work to help around our community. Mm-hmm. Do you remember packing up stuffed animals with Daddy and bringing them to, where did you bring them? We brought them to Goodwill, I think we brought them to. I packed up a bunch of stuffed animals that I don't want anymore, and we brought them to Goodwill. Right. Um, Do you remember packing up stuff for donations that I do? Yes, and we're doing one right now, actually, with books, and we're going to donate it to the Lupus Foundation. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, because when you say you just learned at school, girl, I'm looking at you like, what? (laughs) Okay, (laughs) all right. So it's good that you know about charity. Do you feel like it's important to do those things? Yes, I feel like it's very important for boys and girls um, who are less fortunate, because I know that it isn't their fault that they're less fortunate. Sometimes parents, um, adults make idiotic decisions and sometimes it's just the situation that they're in so i feel like it's not their fault and i feel like it's good to donate your stuff that you might not use anymore okay that's great i like that um so what would you say you are grateful for i feel like i'm grateful for my family i'm grateful for all the stuff that i have and i know that sometimes i can be a little bit spoiled and I'm trying to work on that. But yeah, I'm basically grateful for my family, my best friends, and everything that I have right now. Like, there's nothing else that I really want. Okay, well, I just want to say thank you very much for coming on Side Talk. I appreciate your answers. And people, anyone who knows me and knows my daughter personally knows that that is her. This is how Hallie speaks. Um, Everything that she's saying here is not anything that I told her to say. (laughs) If you have kids, you know that they never listen when you want them to listen. So me trying to tell her, it's not going to happen. But I just wanted to get, you know, a young person's perspective on this topic um, so that to put the conversation in more perspective. So with that being said, here's the interview with Portia Woods, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Today we have Portia Scott. I met Miss Portia Scott. I love your name, by the way. (laughs) Oh, thank you. I met her at PodFest, where I met a lot of amazing content creators, and she is a content creator. She has a podcast. It's called Wake Up and Show Up Podcast. So welcome to Side Talk, Portia. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited about this. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. So tell us about your podcast, I want to know where the inspiration to start the podcast came from and then a little bit about, you know, what, what, what you're talking about. Excellent. Sorry. Um, yeah. So the podcast is wake up and show up with Portia Scott and the genesis of that happened in 2018. My husband and I were on holiday at, in Cape town, South Africa. And um, we were having an amazing time. And it had to be the first time that I ever went on vacation and like really shut down. No work, laptop, anything. And so we were on this beach and we were having an amazing time together. And I tell him, John Henry, I feel so connected to you. And he says, you know what, babe? I feel connected to you whether I'm halfway around the world or whether we're at our coffee date at home. And... I just lost it because what I realized was that my husband had been living this life where he was showing up, where he was present, and I wasn't. I was doing all the things. I was doing homework with the kids. I was loving the kids, loving my husband. I was a workaholic at that time. I was great at what I did, and everything seemed to be going on track, but I was not being intentional about the life I was living. I was not being present. And so for me, it hit me like a ton of bricks because I thought about the people that I love the most 
are not getting the best of me. They're not getting the full person that I am. And so it was out of that. We had had like a two hour conversation after that, just kind of talking through that and through how I had always lived my life to one other people's approval, lived my life for other people's expectations. And so all of the things that I was doing was good, but the motivation was so off. And so coming back to that and making a decision that, you know what, I'm going to be present. Yes, I love to work, so I'm still going to work and do all those things, but I'm going to put things in the proper perspective. And so that's how the Wake Up and Show Up podcast was born. Wow. So (laughs) had you heard a podcast before and thought, oh, well, I could do this too? Or how did that part come about? Because a lot of people still don't even know what podcasts are. I know. So actually, I've been listening to podcasts easily since um, I want to say probably around 2009. And Dave Ramsey was the first podcast I was ever introduced to. And I listened to him for years and years and years. And he was really the only one I listened to. And then as you know, the space opened up and the barrier to entry became to be, you know, was lowered and people could just do it from their phones from, you know, their laptops, then I began to listen to other people. So as I began to listen to podcasts, I fell in love with it. I'm not naturally a get in the car and turn on the music person. I'm a get in the car and turn on an audio book or a podcast. So people talking to me, me being able to hear uh, conversations and just different things that always drew me. So when this happened, I was thinking, what can I do to get my message out? And I was like, I can podcast. I can create a podcast and do it that way. So that's really what drew me. So yeah, I had been listening to podcasts forever. So wake up and show up is basically just you kind of like chronicling your journey of being present in your life. Is that what it is? Absolutely. So I like to say it's a collection of stories and interviews that weaves together life's pivotal moments and the decisions made to show up intentionally to impact humanity. So while I do tell a lot of my stories, my stories usually link with the lesson. Um, And then I get the opportunity to interview different people from business to their personal lives, just everything in between. So I just like a collection of stories so that we can look at other people and see how are they showing up? How are they impacting humanity? And everybody is so different. So it really is a collection of those stories and interviews on how people have made decisions to show up. Nice. I love it. So we decided to do this show today on Side Talk about raising children. And, you know, are we spoiling them? What can we do to kind of like counteract that and those sorts of things. But before we get into that, I thought it would be great to um, do this new thing. (laughs) And I'm going to ask you five questions that I feel would kind of give us a little insight on who Portia Scott is. You know, so instead of doing the traditional, oh, tell us about yourself, you know, I'm going to ask you these five questions and I just want you to answer them. Okay, perfect. (laughs) All right. So the first one is what role in your life are you honored to have? Oh, that's such a good one. And it has to be one role. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay, so because I'm going to push, I'm going to, um, put them together. Uh I'd say uh, the one role is, I think, well, I'll say this. I think the one role that I'm most honored to have is the matriarch of my family. Mm -hmm. So being the wife and the mother and the person that my family gets to kind of look up to. And I think for me, that is, that's the biggest role that I'm honored to have the opportunity to be a wife and to be a mother to the children that I have. I love the way you answered that. Very slick, Portia. <laughs> I know. I tried to get two in one. Did you see that? Yes. <laughs> but that's a tough one because I was thinking the same thing like, man, how would I answer that? But that was good. <laughs> so how would you explain your basic life philosophy? Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> You got some hard ones. I'm telling you, how would I explain my basic life philosophy? I think for me, it would be um, love my love, you know, love God, love myself 
and love others. And I think the basis for that really is that if I keep my life in line, kind of in that order, then I'm going to be effective in whatever it is that I do, that I'm going to keep my integrity and my character in place. And so I, I operate pretty much from that moral compass of loving God, loving myself, and loving others. And so that really is my life philosophy. I think everything else follows that order. Yes, I love it. <laughs> so what is something most people get wrong about you when they meet you? Oh, what is something most people get wrong when they meet me? Yeah, that you think. Um, let me see. Hmm. This is a, this is, these are hard ones. I'm telling you, <laughs> man. I know. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to say, because, so my husband and I spend a ton of time together. Um, he travels a lot, but when he's home, we spend a, a ton of time together. So when people initially meet us, a lot of people meet us uh, based on the, the church that we serve and the things that we do. And so I think because my husband is a little more charismatic he is actually the um, introvert. And so when they first meet us, they kind of see his, you know, charismatic nature. And they think that I am actually the introvert, but I am the extrovert. So if you saw us at a party, you would see that he's like in the corner and I'm the one out. But because I think the way that most people meet us or know us, they kind of meet us in that setting. And so because he is charismatic, they automatically think, oh, well, she must be the introvert. And right. we're like, no, it's the exact opposite. <laughs> I am actually the extrovert. I actually like the people. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you guys spend a lot of time together. That's nice. So what's your favorite website? My favorite website would be google.com. Does that count? No, that's more like a search. It's more like a search engine, right? right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that is that is my favorite too. But like, yeah, Google. Yeah, but if we if we if you went into your search bar right now or opened up your computer, what what is open and what is like most likely always open? Okay, if we are looking at my search bar, Evernote. Evernote is always open. Okay, all right, that's that's fair. And the last question is: Are you more worried about doing things right or doing the right things? That's really good. You know, that's really hard. I think for me, that is a hard one for me. I'm going to answer it, but I'm going to tell you why it's a little hard is because I am the perfectionist um, by nature, right? And so by nature, it's more of doing things right, I think. But if I go back to my philosophy, it's about doing the right things. So I think I'm going to have to wane on the side of doing the right things. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So there's Portia Scott and five questions. <laughs> five hard questions. Like yeah. this wasn't like, like, you know, what's your favorite ice cream? I could do that off my head, but these were, these were exceptional questions. So I appreciate them. No problem. So usually I do surveys for um, side talk and I usually do review the surveys like towards the end, but I figured it would be better or at least I'm trying new things today. So <laughs> we're going to go through the surveys and answer the questions and kind of discuss them together. So okay. this survey, the first question that I asked people was, of course, you have children and everyone who took this survey said, you know, yes, they do. So the first real question is, what's the most expensive gift you have ever bought your child? And before, let me let me let me back up because I this is something that I have to work on myself, too, is just jumping right in. So the reason why I wanted to do this show is because I have a, ch a daughter and I also have a son, but he's a little bit older. He's not living with me. So it's just my daughter that's here. But we went out with a group of other young ladies who are, you know, around the same age to a show. And after the show, we had dinner. And after dinner, the kids were like, they wanted to go to some, you know, uh, place to eat, you know, dessert mm -hmm. or whatever. And I was just looking like, okay, we've had like a day in the city. We've like gone to a show we just had dinner and really <laughs> so of course my daughter she's not saying anything um because she knows 
And but everybody was like, Oh, we want this, we want that, blah, blah, blah. And it just went on and on. And the moms were, you know, like catering to their request, you know, just like, Oh, let's find out what we mm-hmm. can go to or whatever, whatever. And it just dawned on me. And I'm like, Oh my God, what are we doing to our kids? Like, I get it that we want to, you know, give our children all that we didn't have, or we want them to have the best life possible. But at the same time, like, is this good? Because I didn't grow up like that. And I think I turned out fine, you know, and I just like other little things, watching my daughter and the way that she acts sometimes and, you know, the self-centeredness about how they act like she the other day she's like oh um I need I can we go to five below because I need to go get this or I I need to get get a new notebook and it's like girl I've been driving around I just went to the grocery store I went here I gotta go back home I gotta cook dinner like you want me to go all the way here just to get you a new book when you have books in your room that you can sketch on like just totally oblivious to what you have going on, just kind of really self-serving, you know? So it just yeah. made me think, you know, as on a whole, like, what are we doing? Are we paying attention to how we're raising our kids, um, trying to give them everything and, and make them comfortable, but what it's doing to them in the process? So that is the reasoning behind this podcast. And I just kind of want to delve into that and dissect it a little bit. So the first question that I asked um, was, what is the most expensive gift that you ever bought your child and how old were they? So one person said a dollhouse for $199 at six years old. And I think that that's not bad, right? I think we've all done that. The Mm -hmm. kitchens and the, you know, when they're little kids. Um, Absolutely. Right? So I didn't think that was bad. The most expensive thing, one person said a go-kart, nine years old, it's $400. A lab, um, a desktop at six or seven. So, and none of these were really outrageous. You know, I feel like yeah, it's yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say it seems like the what they're buying kind of fits with the age of of the children. Right. You know. Yeah. So I feel like that that is all good for me. I would say the most expensive gift that I probably bought my daughter was a nameplate that I got for her last year for her 10th birthday. So that would probably be the most expensive. And it wasn't that expensive. It doesn't have like diamonds. It's not huge. And (laughs) you know what I mean? Like I went basic. I didn't get carried away because my thing was if she loses it, you know, I'm going to be mad. So it was a couple hundred dollars and it, you know, but it was still expensive for me, you know, like, oh, Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So um, for you, what was the most expensive thing that you've ever bought your children? Yeah. So I had to say like the most expensive gift. Mm -hmm. So I have a 23 year old, a 12 year old and a six year old. So um, when our son graduated from high school, uh, and he was going into the military. And so we had purchased him a car, right? And so the car, it wasn't, we didn't get him like a Tesla or Mercedes or anything like that. We ended up getting him like a Ford Fiesta. So it was like $20,000, something like that, $23,000, which is still a lot of money. You know, like it's not a low, you know, uh, a little bit of money. It wasn't like a beater or anything. So we did buy him a new car. And mm-hmm. that was probably the most expensive gift that um, that we've ever bought a child I'm trying to think during you know their younger years I think it kind of coincides with what everyone else was saying as far as like the American girl stuff and all of that but that was like the most expensive gift well he deserved it he graduated and was going to the military come on I mean, he did. He did. Right. But someone else, I I think one of the things, too, is when we talk about our kids being spoiled, um, you know, I heard it growing up and we hear it all the time. Oh, that child is spoiled. And I think when we look at what it means to be spoiled is really like because I thought about this and just kept kind of mulling it over. And we look at like harmed in character by being treated leniently or indulgently. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about them being spoiled is that giving them too much lead way or indulging them too much, is it harming their t- character? And right. so, yes, we could have gotten him a $3,000, $7,000 car or whatever, something really less. 
uh, we knew he was going to D.C. And, and you're right. It was a gift that we had been talking about for years, that this was something that we wanted to set in place that if you graduated from high school and not only did he graduate, I mean, he graduated with good grades. It wasn't like he was barely getting by, you know, and so we thought that 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 was appropriate. But yeah. somebody else could say, right now, come on, girl, you know, so <laughs> I feel like buying a, um, a young adult a car for a graduation gift is I feel like it's totally appropriate if you can afford it and if they have done a great job in you know all of the years of going to school bringing home good grades and you want to get them a car it's going to help them get from wherever they need to be I think that it's a wonderful thing and I think that that's great especially it helps to kind of teach them okay now you have this car it's your responsibility you need to take care of it I think those things need to also be transferred over to them like maybe you're paying the insurance you're gonna you know what I mean Mm -hmm. the upkeep and maintenance of this vehicle so absolutely I feel like yeah there's ways pay for yeah he did pay for the insurance and things like that and I have to say that I think if he wasn't just going back to the definition I think if he was immature Mm -hmm. we would not have put that in there right if he was you know one of the kids that were like he's going to get this car he's going to be all over the place he's going to have tons of people in there putting his life and other people's life in jeopardy I would not have given him that right because he's just not mature enough to handle it but just knowing the child that he is then you know we felt comfortable and I think that's something that as parents, we have to think about is that we're we're indulging these children um, when we're giving them what we didn't have, uh, that making sure that it does align with the character of your kids. We know our kids, you know, yep. and, Absolutely. and you know if they're mature enough for this kind of vehicle or for this kind of gift. Yep, I agree. And that's something we definitely have to keep in the forefront of our minds is like, you know, your kids, so be careful. So the next question that I asked was if, um, do you feel bad if your child tells you that their classmate, friends or family member has something that they, they don't have? And do you feel compelled to buy it? Most people said no, that they don't. But I feel like most people are not being 100% honest. I feel like people are very competitive and I feel like people feel, you know, like if their kids don't have what, you know, everybody else has, then it's going to make them feel like, you know, they're not adequate. They're not up to par, you know, whatever. Um, I was having this conversation with a coworker and I, you know, asked her this question and she said, you know, it's funny that you say that because. Uh, my son had asked me for uh, um, one of those uh, Nintendo switches or whatever those things are called. Mm-hmm. And she was like, uh, no, that's a little expensive. And he was like, oh, my God, all of my friends have it. If I don't ha- if I don't get it, I'm going to be the only like idiot who doesn't have one. And she said for a split second, she thought about it like, oh, my God. You know, and then she was like, right, Mm-mm-mm. you could just play with one of theirs like because I'm not buying that, you know, but then she ended up getting it for him anyway, I think down the line for something else. So it's like, what was the motivating factor for that? Like, why did you end up buying it for them anyway? Like, is it right. really because, you know, because my daughter comes home and she'll be like, oh, you know, <laughs> Gianna had this book, but her things are more like simple. It's not like a $250 gift. It's like, oh, my friend had this art book and I just really love it. She got it from Five Below. And I'll be like, me, first of all, I hate having things that other people have. That's yeah. just something that's in me. I don't know why I'm like that, but I just don't. And it's not like... I can have things that other people don't because I'm not rich where I could like buy exclusive things that other people don't have. But I just don't like twinning with people that I hang out with. I think it's just so tacky. So if I see you with something and I think it's great, I'll be like, oh my God, Portia, that's nice. I love it. But I would never go out and buy it because I just... I just think that's tacky. <laughs> that's right. just for me. It's so funny. I have a friend that's just like that. Like, yeah. and, and not in that aspect, but like, 
yeah, she is not about like twinning, right? You know, and mm-hmm. so it's funny because if like your hairstyles are the same and stuff like that, and I, I think that's good, right? Like just being an original, and right. if you want something that somebody may have, it's not motivated because somebody right? Has it. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. I think that's that's the key. If you like something, it's fine to buy it because you like it, but don't buy it because your friend has it and you just have to have it because she has it like come on girl stop you know so I try to tell my daughter well do you have to have the same exact book like what's so special about this book why do you have to you know and we get into that whole conversation but um I feel like a lot of people do and especially in today's you know society they feel like pressured a little bit like oh my god like if mm-hmm. if i don't you know my kid's going to be the only one without a phone or my kid's going to be the only one without an ipad or my kid's going to be you know right. and they think like that but everybody said no here so i don't know maybe they lying portia maybe not <laughs> I don't know. You know, I answered this and I, you probably were going to ask me, but I answered it and I did say it depends on what it is. Yes. Right? Oh, that's I'm, your honestly, answer. So I I was going to say, I should have said what I was going to say. I was going to say there was one person that said <laughs> it depends on what it is. And they said, I don't feel pressured, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, should I purchase it? And that is an honest and valid answer in my book but just to say no never absolutely not come on so Mm -hmm. I'm sorry Portia go ahead what were you gonna say girl (laughs) no yeah I was just gonna say that that you know what it's usually for me and my my kids it's usually not something like a classmate has Mm -hmm. and I don't I don't know why every now and then my son's six right and so the big thing with them is can I run faster jump higher and so I need these shoes to jump faster and jump higher And for me, it's easy in that aspect to say, no, you have like 10,000 pairs of shoes. One of these shoes goes fast, (laughs) you know, and so (laughs) or jumps high like one of them does it. But I think trying to teach that lesson of listen, kind of like your daughter, right? Do you need that book? What's so good about these shoes? You know, and is it that you want it because of somebody else wants it? And I. But if it's something else, there is some things, right? The good old YouTube. Mm-hmm. Man, that that YouTube has these kids thinking that YouTube is reality. And right. it isn't all the time. You yeah. know, those trips to Bora Bora, they're being paid by somebody else. Or, you know, Ryan's toy review. They're sending him all these toys. And right. so at <laughs> six, you know, my six-year-old doesn't really understand that. But one of the things that we do as a family is we really do try to travel a lot. So we'll say, you know, okay, well, we're not going to do a big Christmas, but we're going to go somewhere for Christmas. So my kids, they want to go to expensive places. Mm -hmm. So my son, he says he wants to go to the Philippines, right? This is a big thing. He's, he's wanted to go to the Philippines. And I remember when he first said it and I was like, Oh, I'm, I mean, first I was impressed that my six year old knew about the Philippines, you know, right. but, then, <laughs> but then after that, I'm like, I don't think it's bad to want to go on a trip. But why do you want to go on a trip because you saw somebody on that trip and you want to be like them, you know, mm-hmm. and and so then you do feel kind of that pressure I, for me. And I'm only saying to me that in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, well, they're sending their kids. I can do that, too, you right. know, and. And it is. It, I think it comes from a place of we want our kids to see better, to do better, to have better. Right. And there wasn't a time that I could go to my parents and say, hey, I want to go to the Philippines. I told you that my husband travels a ton. And so uh, over the last two years, he's traveled to 50, 60 different countries. Right. Mm-hmm. So going to the so so when my son came back and said it, he said, no, I want to go to the Philippines because daddy went. Well, that changes the motivation a little bit. But there are other times, my daughter, can we go to Bora Bora? Do you have Bora Bora money? I'm sorry. You know, and so I'm I'm excited that they want to see the world. Mm -hmm. But I, like you said, I want their motivation to be because they want to go, not because you have to be the next YouTuber or or take a picture for Instagram. That is not the motivator. But as a parent, to be honest, in the back of my mind, sometimes I am thinking, 
do I really care about the motivation or do I care about being able to, to say that I can take my daughter there? I can take my son there. Right. So See? I was trying to be as honest. As I possible. love that you're being honest because this is what it's all about. Just having these honest conversations and just being real about it, you know, because if we're not real yeah. with ourselves, then how can we help to, you know, fix it a little bit? You know what I mean? Because there's nothing wrong with mm-hmm. that being the motivation if that is the motivation. But just take a look at it and then dissect it a little bit and make it make sense, you know? So right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I appreciate that. And I'm glad that you spoke up because I can't really tell who says what when I send out these mm-hmm. surveys. It depends on how I um, get them back. So I didn't know that you said this, but I did. That did catch my attention. Like, <laughs> oh, this person is being honest. Like and people, I really appreciate you filling out the surveys. And I'm not saying that you guys are liars, but I think sometimes you <laughs> think because I know some of you that I'm going to judge you or. I might think honestly when the results Mm -hmm. come back I don't know who said what sometimes I can figure out based on what you said if it's direct if it's really personal but for the most part Mm -hmm. I I really don't (laughs) so please be honest and I'm not getting this information to judge you it's really to have like honest dialogue with my guests and talk about these issues Yeah. And you know what? It's funny because I want it to be, I think, right, because I'm the intentional woman or Mm -hmm. the intentional girl uh, living your life in your present. And I think it's so important to live your life in your truth. And that this for me was a truth. And it was hard because I will not lie. I went back and forth to about how honest should I be? I didn't know you were going to ask me to come on or where they where the questions were going to go. But I did go back and forth. You Mm -hmm. know, I have those times where my kids are like, watching something again on YouTube and they're like, oh, look at, they got a new house, a bigger house. We need a bigger house. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, and it does gut for me, it gut punches me because I have tried to live a life, my husband and I, to give our kids uh, a different level of living than what we were able to, than what we experienced as children. So when they say that, it's like, man, like it's not enough you know, and so it goes back to because oftentimes we parent from a place of pain. Our motivations are because I don't want my children to experience this, whatever this is. And so for me, it had always been I want to make sure one that my kids want for nothing. And so that's why this particular spoiled thing hits deep because it is how do I balance that? How do I make sure that they have what they need and some of the things that they want, but still ensuring that their character is in intact, you know? So, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, what's important. And that's what we have to make sure we have to gauge that, you know what I'm saying? So we have to pay attention to those things because we, they're still young and we can kind of curb that a little bit and, you know, fix it so that as they get older, their wants and desires and needs make sense. It's not just driven off of, you know, Instagram, because I mean, when you look at it now, this stuff is, it's everywhere Instagram TikTok Mm -hmm. this and that and oh look at what this person has and people are creating these fake lives online and you look at these pictures and you think that everything is so fabulous and this person has this that and the other thing meanwhile this person probably can't even pay their bills or you know they're like right you know what I mean so we have to make sure that we get our kids grounded so that's really why I also want to do this podcast because I feel like it's just necessary So, um, do you buy your children, whatever they ask for? Most people said, uh, no. (laughs) (laughs) So I can tell you that most of the things that my daughter asked for, she has gotten 99% of the Mm -hmm. things that she's asked for. So (laughs) for this to be like at 90%, no, uh, come on guys. Right. Um, So what else did I talk about? Uh, Birthday parties and uh, birthday parties are expensive. Um, I have spent 500, 600, you know, dollars on a birthday party. So, you know, I feel like everybody was pretty much in line with that. You know, they're spending the most. So then uh, get to the the meat of everything. Do you feel you spoil your kids? Most people said 
no. Oh, um, no. Are you yes. serious? I thought you were going to say yes. No. <laughs> they said no. So this is how delusional most people are. So, guys, I'm going to read you uh, some signs that your child is spoiled, right? Because my child, she's spoiled. And I'm just going to keep it real. She's spoiled. Mm -hmm. So, and my son is also spoiled. Okay. So number one, when you say no, they throw a tantrum until they get their way. So that's for the little ones. If they're doing that, they're spoiled Two, They are never satisfied with what they have. Instead of expressing their gratitude for what they have, they're more focused on getting the next thing. My daughter does that. Okay. She has tons of stuff in her room. Oh, she, she'll run through her art book sketching. Oh, I need another art book. Girl, you have sketch paper in your room. Oh, I can't, I don't know. I don't have that. I don't have, then when I don't buy her, get, let her get the book, all of a sudden she finds that sketchbook that she, she didn't have, right? Mm -hmm. Cause she's always mm -hmm. focusing on the next thing. Three. They think the world revolves around them. They aren't concerned with inconveniencing other people. So again, like how I told the story, when I had all of this running around to do, and I think this was like early stages of the coronavirus. So it was still, you know, like get, get your stuff and get, get back in the house. She's talking right. about, can we go over here? Or actually it wasn't even the coronavirus. <laughs> I'm lying. It was the snow. It was snowing. And she's like, oh, well, can we go over here? Because I really need to get this book. Everything that she needs, it needs to happen now. Right. It can, it's, it cannot mm -hmm. wait. It needs to happen like right this minute. That's 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 one of these because she's not thinking about me. She's thinking about her wants and her needs. If your child does that, he or she spoil. They demand mm -hmm. things ASAP. That's my daughter. She needs something. I need this art book. Why, girl? Are you a famous artist and you got a job tonight? Like, wh why do you need this book now? There's because she's trying to be a famous artist. <laughs> she needs it. She needs it. She has an art, <laughs> right? No, she needs everything now. And they're sore losers. So if you're playing a game and you know they don't win that round and they get an attitude or you have to talk them back into good graces to finish the game mm -hmm. spoiled okay so oh, wow. yeah so these are some things that i know personally i've seen with some of my friends kids my niece you know and everybody said no well my kid is not spoiled mm -hmm. are you kidding me what are you talking about you know what? I and I was one of the ones that actually said yes. So I did say that. But I told you as I was thinking about it, I'm like, so let's think about this. <laughs> like is is being too lenient and indulgent is it harming their character? But I wanted to ask you this about your daughter because you know what? The one thing that your daughter is incessant about is her creativity. Mm -hmm. Like she wants to draw. She wants her art. She wants her thing. And so I wonder if that drive for her passion to art is driving her wanting stuff. For her, like for your daughter, and I don't know all the situations, but just if we just kind of separate everything and go to the the art stuff, like everything is art. Everything you said, it's not like I want new shoes. I want to go here. I want a new dress. But her thing is like art. So is it her passion for that? That's drawing. I need this now because it fulfills that creativity, that passion in her. It's possible. But this is where, um, you know, balance comes into play. And the balance right. is you know what, mommy, I'd really like this um, new notebook. And it's never anything really expensive because I have to say my daughter is spoiled, but she's not rotten, right? So it'll be yeah. like a book for five bucks. You know, she's very conscious mm -hmm. of how she spends her money and things like that. So instead of saying, I need to go out and buy this book right now, what I would like her to say is, <laughs> I need a new book. It's not an, a dire emergency. So I'll just use some of this paper that we have here that we print on. Or you know what, I have right. an old notebook in my room, I'll just use that. Or mom, do you happen to have an extra, you know, notebook, we have tons of those notebooks that you get from like, I don't know, seminars or like work or wherever mm -hmm. that you are just sitting around, right? It's just paper. So she could just yeah. use something like that in the interim. But 
no, I, I, I want my new book because that's what I want. And my wants yeah, and needs have to I be fulfilled, it. you know? So that's what I'm saying yeah. is that we have to pay attention to the monsters that we're creating because these monsters get bigger and bigger and then they go out into the real oh, world and then their demands stay the same and then they get a reality check, right? So right, why right. not help them now so that we can ease them into reality. And by the time they get up there where they're off onto their own, they kind of know how to balance those things. Right. I think that is important, you know, that they don't have this privileged, right, mm-hmm. type of attitude. Because that's what happens when we don't correct it, when we don't say, listen, I understand that you want the book. I loved how you put that balance in. And I loved how you were saying, I would like this, but I'm going to use this until I can get that right? Because you're right, then they grow up and they're privileged. And we have now created um, these children who are now adults that have this kind of privileged attitude. So you see it in the workplace. Well, I deserve to get paid more. But do you? Like, do you have the skills? Do ha- Have you, you know, what do you have a value that will constitute that you're supposed to get paid more or I'm not going to do this. So I definitely and I'm sure you've seen it, too, in, you know, just working and in corporate America and just different things that you do. Or even when we're going to like, you know, I've gone to, you know, a retail store or somewhere and it's almost as if the customer service that they give is kind of like, oh, you should be happy that I'm working here. no. You should be happy that I am a customer because I pay, I, you know, I sign your paycheck. So I I definitely get it is that bringing them into balance. And I love that because I think I'm going to use that the next time someone's like, hey, I really need these shoes so I could customize. Yeah, no, let's customize (laughs) the hundred thousand shoes you have in there. Right. And then if you need some, you know what I mean? So I I loved how you put that. Absolutely. So um, let's talk about um, some ways that we can curb some of this behavior. So the first thing is get used to saying no, we have to say no more often. And I know it's hard because even me myself, like I hate telling my daughter, no, I hate when she wants something. And I I really don't want to get it for her. Sometimes I have no problem. Like she felt that she needed air buds or ear pods the ones that go in your ears mm-hmm. right and I was like um in the words of my show oh hell no uh, you don't need right. those <laughs> right I told her no absolutely not because I thought that that was ridiculous the cost was yeah. just you know so what she did was she saved her money any money that she received <gasps> from birthdays chores anything and she bought her own ear pods Good so for her. Yes. So that's the difference with my daughter. She has a lot of technology because my husband works in IT and he loves technology. So he has a lot of technology. She's had an iPad since there. I think it was like the first generation, but that was his mm-hmm. iPad that he gave to her and bought a new one for himself. So she's never had like a brand new iPad. She's had all hand me down, you know, gadgets from her dad right her cell phone he actually did buy it for her birthday but it was like a deal buy two phones and whatever something from AT&T so we really try right, to yep. do things that make sense right and again certain things to me don't make sense and when she asks me I'll say no and what she'll do is she'll save and she will buy her things on her own and she takes very good care of them so absolutely, that's that's in that's that's the balance that I'm happy about. But at the same time, I can still see some of the spoiled ways poking their ugly head through, and I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, right. I, and you're right; it is hard to say no, right? I know yes. for me, I do say no. Like when it's ridiculous, I'm like no. So my son. Because everybody, you know, we're an Apple family. Um, and so everybody has iPads. And it's, it's the same way. Like some of them were passed down. Or like my daughter, she's 12. She'll be 13. So she does have a phone uh, that we purchased. And my son has an iPad. But it was the same thing with like AT&T. They always have these deals like, oh, you upgrade this and you get that or whatever. So um, they had it. But he was saying, oh, everybody in the house has a phone. I don't have a phone. Well, I was... I was perfectly okay with telling my six-year-old, no, 
you don't get a phone, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think those things that, that speak to my convictions, I'm like, no, no, you cannot get a phone, but we had to upgrade a phone. So he got a old, my old phone, you know, and right. it doesn't call out. Obviously he's using it just as he would an iPad on Wi-Fi. Exactly. Um, and I, that's what we did too with my daughter until she started taking the bus. And then we were like, okay, we might have to really get her phone now just in case, you know? And that's oh, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut it's, you. Go ahead. No. Yeah. So I, I say that because it's easy for me to say no about those things that, that are conviction to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for me, I have a hard time. I think one of the ways that I'm able to say no is that instinctively and on the inside of me, I told you again that a lot of times we parent from, you know, different places, different motivations, right? Uh, incorporate the way we parent. And so I can say no for me a little easier when I know I'm saying no, not because I have to, but because I want to. And um, for me, that is a driver, you know, and I'm just kind of putting all my business out there. But um, for me, it's easier for me to say no to my children is because I can say, oh, I'm saying no, not because I need you to wait till I get the money or be or until I have the resources. Now, going to Bora Bora Delta One, that's a different story. But, you know, the, <laughs> the regular things um, I can say yes to and go get them. But I'm saying no, because I want to because you don't need to have this per se. So I'm just speaking from a parent standpoint is that uh, just being honest again and saying that the motivations and the reason why we do stuff. And for me, I have to check myself and say, Portia, are you going to buy another pair of shoes because <laughs> they need it or because it's it speaks to something in your soul that's right. missing Yeah, that you feel like you have to do this because you missed out or you didn't have this or you may have had to wait where your kids don't have to. So mm -hmm. I think for me, it's a lot of me checking me to say, what is the motivation behind you feeling like you have to go buy this? Absolutely. It's so funny. I was listening to Oprah's episode today and she said something along the lines of, you know, all the people who buy things for the sole purpose of, um, and this is not verbatim, but who buy things for the sole purpose of, you know, flaunting it around for other people or, you know, to be right. seen. Now you have nowhere to go. So now what? You know, and I thought that was so powerful. It was like, wow, that is so true. You know, kind of puts everybody in check. So, okay, these are some things that we can do to 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 fix our behavior and and help get our children back under control. <laughs> so, say no. Yes, help us. <laughs> yes, emphasizing giving is better than receiving. So we have to remind them that you know sometimes instead of receiving. You could give. So what my husband used to do with my daughter when she was little is he every month he would make her pack up like five toys that she doesn't use and um, bring them to the Salvation Army and donate them. But then he'd take her to Toys R Us and buy her one toy. So I don't know how impactful that was, but it was a great message. It was teaching her to give. But I don't know yeah. if she should have received so soon after the giving. So that's good. I, you know, it's so funny you say that because that's what we would do, um, especially with my daughter, um, is that, you know, whenever we were going to buy something new or do something, she had to, you know, give away clothes or give away toys as a means of saying, you know, having gratitude for what you have. And that is a good point. I didn't think about maybe maybe you don't give it back as soon right. as they get. Yes. Um, I think some of ours, and I just can speak to us, is that it's kind of like, um, you know, what you sow, you reap. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't say how soon or how long after. And maybe as adults, we understand that more. We can understand that concept and analyze it that like, it doesn't mean when you give today, you're going to get back today. I mean, it could, somebody could do something for you. But um, I think for us, we were trying to teach it as in, you know, when you sow good seeds, you reap good seeds. It doesn't necessarily mean you reap it in the same way, mm -hmm. but you do, you do reap. So um, we did have her like essentially do the same exact thing. So that's so yeah. funny that 
that you bring that up, but yeah. we were just trying to teach them gratitude. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. So I didn't want to get involved because that was their thing that they did together. Mm -hmm. So I just let him do it. But now just thinking about it and she was young, so maybe <laughs> it was fine because she's like four or five years old, you know, and they're doing that. So right. it was teaching her about giving. Practice gratitude as a family. So what I've started doing with my daughter is um, we sit down and we talk about all the things that we're grateful for in the day. I've been meaning to have her write in a gratitude journal, create one for her because she was getting on my nerves like a couple of months ago with this spoiledness. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're going to write a gratitude journal every night. Like you need to be grateful for everything. You see that you're breathing right yeah. now. You need to be grateful for that. Every day you're going to write five things down that you're grateful for. So I think that's a great way for us to really make our kids appreciate small things and just the everyday right. things that they don't even think about, you know, kids grow up, our kids grew, grow up a lot better than we did and a lot better than a lot of kids living in this country today. Right. So mm -hmm. I think it's very important to have them make them realize that coming, getting up and, and going in the refrigerating refrigerator and being able to eat all day long, like you sh you're great. You should be grateful for that because a lot of kids right. can't even get one meal a day living in the United States of America, which is mind boggling mm -hmm. to me, but it's reality. So it is, it is. Yeah. I think you think about now the coronavirus. And so, um, I do these lives every morning and one of the organizations that we're kind of trying to push for people to help is No Kid Hungry. Mm -hmm. And they're providing meals and grants because children that are no longer going to school, they rely on that lunch. They rely on that breakfast um, to eat. And so now they don't have that. I know a lot of schools are like going around and the buses are still yes. coming around to feed those children. Yep. But yeah, I mean, for you to feel like you can eat up everything in the house, like exactly. that is huge. And that's another thing I had to like tell my daughter, listen, at school, you would eat at 11 30 and not again till six let's keep that same schedule boo boo okay how about that because okay. <laughs> coming in here in this kitchen every two hours talking about oh it's time for lunch oh it's time for snack oh i'm gonna make some guacamole oh like you're driving me crazy not guacamole girl not guacamole. She, i love it <laughs> listen she has a recipe and she comes down and makes guacamole okay <laughs> so over it <laughs> I'm done with you her. You can make it like, um, it used to be, I know they used to call it home ec. I'm a little older, but I know they used to call it like home ec. So you could just be like, okay, during your home ec time, I know they right. have it at that age, but like, go ahead and make your guacamole because mommy wants some too. Make sure we have some tortillas. Listen, I was sick of guacamoles for, so I took a break on it, but you know, I think she needs to make it because the two avocados I have are going bad. So she, she can go ahead and make it now, but she was driving me crazy. <laughs> It's so, so funny. She's hilarious. So the next thing is teach them to be considerate of others, right? So that's, we mm -hmm. need to teach our children to be considerate. Just because you have something, you don't need to, you know, posing off in everybody's face. Look, when I got, when I got that. Right. Oh, please, I have the new one. Oh, that's old. Oh, that's this. That's that. No, that's terrible. We don't do that. Like, Hallie doesn't even bring those AirPods to school. Like, she doesn't bring that to school. Her phone, she's not allowed to use her phone during school. And she's very, like, she she sticks to the rules. Like, she's like me. I, I'm a rule follower. Like, I do not break mm -hmm. the rules because I don't want to get in trouble. She's like that, too. So, thank God for that, you know. So, she's not out flossing her phone and her AirPods and all this other foolishness. Like, <laughs> no, it's a no. <laughs> Right, 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 right. And the last thing is kids respond better to encouragement than punishment. So while we're trying to curb this behavior, we should encourage them. And, you know, when they're doing well and we see them like we see some signs of improvement, we should really, you know, commend them for the for those um, strides that they're making and really try to, I don't know, steer them in the right direction with encouragement rather than being like, oh, you're not listening. You're going to go on punishment for this or whatever. Because I think it's something right. that will take time to kind of undo, if you will, you know? Yeah, I think so. I think when you think about us, you know, uh, one of the questions was, were you spoiled as, grow as 
growing up. And yes. I, I would say that I was spoiled with what my parents could do, if that makes sense. Right. So they did not make the money that my husband and a lot of the generations after them have been able to accumulate. Mm -hmm. And and so, but I was spoiled with what they had. And I know that if I asked for something, you know, that whole thing that they would say, we can't get it now, but I knew I was getting it, if that makes sense. So with what they had, they spoiled me with that. And so, um, but I also understood that there were some things that I went without, you know, uh, I like to, our kids, what we do every night is we all pray together. Mm -hmm. And so we don't start a prayer asking for stuff. Like the beginning of everybody's prayer is thank you for something, you know? So it, whether it's, you know, sometime they say, thank you that you helped me on the test. Thank you, God, that, you know, we had food. Thank you. So I love, and I love the journaling thing too, but as a family, so we get to kind of hear what the kids are thankful for. Yeah. And um, I love that, that about the reinforcement. We try to, when we hear something say, oh my goodness, that was so good, you know, but making sure that we do more of that. Cause it is very easy to say, well, you stop asking for a new house. You should be grateful for <laughs> For this house. I'm just saying, I know that doesn't right. happen in, in anybody else's house, but that definitely happens in my house where I'm like, can you be grateful for all these four bedrooms that you have? Oh, right. I'm sorry. We don't have a dog. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> but in- <laughs> yes, you see, right. Instead of being grateful for what we yeah. have, we're looking to the next thing. <laughs> we got to We got to get that yeah, under control. So, so yeah, making sure I'm doing that encouragement where I'm like, you know what? It's good that you're grateful. I like to see that you're, you're using, you know, that gratitude. And so that's, I like that pushing that encouragement. Yes, absolutely. So I asked about doing volunteer work and most people, their children have done volunteer work, which is awesome. So volunteer and charity work, if your child has not done it, um, these are ways that you can, you know, introduce them to it. And remember, doing volunteer and charity work teaches empathy. So that's another great benefit of, you know, having your child get out there and volunteer. So you can let them help with gathering items for charity. I have lupus, so I always donate to the lupus foundation. Are you serious? Yeah, I do. I'm sorry. I know you can <laughs> no, my husband okay. does too. Yeah. So when you said that, it was like that touches home for me. Yeah. 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 So I always donate to the lupus foundation and I also do- donate to the the men's veterans um foundation. I donate like whatever if my husband has like dress shirts that he just doesn't want to wear anymore, we donate those things as well to the veterans. And um, then if there's any other charity that I see, like I interviewed um, this lady, uh, I think it was last year, who has this amazing foundation where they help women um, learn how to, they learn basic life skills so that they can retain Mm -hmm. jobs and make money to take care of themselves and and their families. So I organized like a, a donation at my job and everyone donated and it was so amazing and we raised money and donated to them. So I love doing charity work and I encourage it. So my daughter sees me doing that. And when I'm packing up things, and like I said, my husband would have her go to the Salvation Army. So she definitely knows about charity. And in school, I think they're doing more of it because I see her coming home like, oh, it's time to, you know, collect the cans for the food. What do they call them? The food, um... I can't even get the food like drive. Drives. Right. Yeah. Like the food drives. So they collect food for that. And one time she came home with this thing for the cancer um, foundation and they were raising money. The only thing I don't like about that is they make it very, they make it like a mandatory pushy thing. And I don't like that. I feel like it should be right. more like, listen, we would love for you guys to learn about donating and we would like you to help and whatever you can get we appreciate and we want you to do right. But I felt more like they were making these kids feel like some pressure about getting these donations and stuff. And I just didn't like that. (laughs) I know it kind of turns them off, right? Like, yes, kind of like a turn off even for us when you're like, I'm being made to do this. Like that's not how it works. Exactly. That's not how like, (laughs) no, not like how volunteering works or any of this works. That's not how none of this works. Like don't force me to do it. But, um, I, I think they're just trying to, you know, yeah, meet I, whatever quota or whatever thing that they had and, and get people involved. But it is true. I think there's a that's not right uh, way to do it. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. 
So also now me, I can tell my kids, you're going to volunteer. I don't care what you say. And you're going to volunteer until this becomes a thing you want to do. But, you know, <laughs> I, I don't want anyone else pushing. <laughs> right. <laughs> so also have your kids um, pick out canned foods for the food drives. Let them do a walk for a cause with you. So if you're very passionate about a cause, take your kid along. Let them do the walk. Explain to them why you're doing the walk and what it supports and what it benefits. Ask your child how they would like to give back for the season. So just make them get, let them be creative and ask them, you know, what would you like to do to give back and have them come up with something and then you be supportive of their, you know, thought or whatever it is that they want to do. Discuss other people's wants and needs, just like how we were talking about the kids who, you know, don't have lunch, you know, because school is not in session and how the buses have to deliver, you know, explain those things to your kids so that they are, they understand that there are people out there probably right in the same class with them who do not live the same way they do. And they should be compassionate and empathetic to those people who have those situations, right? Yeah, absolutely. I th- I think it is, you know, we kind of live in this bubble, right? Yes. Our children live in this bubble where they haven't seen a lot of life, which you know, some of that we're grateful for, right? That they didn't have, they don't have to see certain things, Mm -hmm. but I think because they are closed off, they don't know. I remember we uh, go to, we go to Los Angeles a lot. Um, My husband's from LA, but the kids just love it. And so my daughter models and acts and stuff like that. So she just loves it out there. And I remember we went out there and we were in Santa Monica and you see a lot of homeless, you know? And I remember we walked past this guy. We were like laughing because not at him, but just laughing at something we were doing. But we walked past him and her whole face just changed and she's crying, you know, and I'm like, what is wrong with you? And she's like, did you not see that guy? Like people live on the street, mom, Mm -hmm. you know, and in my mind, I'm like, "I, I do know that. But for her to see it was you may have heard of homelessness, but to, for it to be in your face. And yep. so for her to see that and just feel, you know, that empathy for other people, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I was just like, I mean, I almost started crying and I've yeah. seen homeless people before, but just to see how it affected her. And so I think, like you say, yeah. it is important for us to to talk about it rather than you better eat your food because, you know, there are homeless, you know, right. you know the whole spiel, right? right. Like there are hungry children. Yep. We could go to, to really. <laughs> yeah, you can go to anywhere that, you know, like we live in New Jersey. So Manhattan, you can see homeless people there, mm-hmm. the train stations, you know, so take your kid for a little trip, you know, t- to see some reality because it's real, you know, right. and that can it, be anyone. It, it can happen to anyone, you know, so the thing about it is that's what you have to explain to your children is that, you know, some of these people probably had successful jobs and, and, and happy lives, but maybe a break in, in their mental capacity, you know, mm. brought them down to where they are today, or maybe just, you know, being fired and not being able to get themselves back together. Like it could be anything. So we have to understand right. as people that anything is possible for any of us. So we have to really you know, stay in a place of um, gratitude and just appreciate every day that we have that we are of sound mind and able to, you know, live a good life. And living a good life doesn't mean having an iPad and an iPod and whatever else, you know, (laughs) it could mean just waking up in your home with your family. So we got to reinforce that. And then, so visit a nonprofit organization, which can also teach empathy, right? And then make charity a visual activity. So, you know, try to do something, you know, once a year with the family that everyone can get involved in and just make it something that you work towards. My daughter used to do Girl Scouts and that was good because she did a lot of different little activities with them as well. But, um, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of ways that you as a family can go out and donate and do things. So the last thing that I want to talk about is, um, you know, saving 
and spending, right? Because we got to teach them about them as well. So when when I was out with those uh, young ladies and my daughter that evening, you know, I'm very saucy. So I I will tell kids the way it is in a minute. No, you don't say. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I couldn't tell that at all. (laughs) Yes. So when they were like whining about not being able to get dessert, I said, ladies, let me explain something to you. Do you know how much this day has cost so far? And I broke down to them the drive to the train station, the parking cost, the cost for the trains, the cost for the subways, the cost for the tickets that we paid to see the show, the cost for dinner per parent. And then now they wanted to throw dessert on top. And everybody was looking like, oh, yeah. Oh, you get it now? So kids need to understand saving and spending and how we do that. So um, what I like to do with my daughter is when she gets money, I tell her you need to save half that money and you need to put um, and then you can take the rest of it and keep it and, you know, maybe treat yourself to something or maybe save that until you get something that you want, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Another thing is um, make them save for things that they want because if they're always spending your money, then everything seems to be a absolute need, you know? Like I have to have that because mommy is going to, mommy and daddy's going to buy it. But when you start saying, oh, you buy it, watch and see how things change and how they spend their money. They get real conscious. Absolutely. Right? Oh, they really do. You go into the mall, you're like, they're like, oh, I want this, this, this. You're like, oh, okay, so that's coming out of your account. Mm-hmm. You know that, oh, well, I don't think I want those jeans. Exactly. You know, my daughter, I think one of the things we did with her was we got her, you know, you could have these kids spending accounts on your bank account so we can see everything. And so we see when the money goes in, but she can track it too. And so we're able to kind of teach money management that way that like you, if you have $50, you don't spend $50. So we always say that money is here to spend, save and give. And so whenever you get money, you need to split it up into those three categories. And so you need to give some, you need to save some and you can spend. But even in your spending, you need to write down what you want. So we have her do that before she goes to the store so that when she gets there, this was your list. So don't go off and, you know, be emotionally spending because Mm -hmm. then you won't get what you need. And so she's been very good about that, that when she knows like, oh, my birthday's coming up or something's coming up, she'll make a list of the stuff that she wants. And then according to what she's getting, what are you going to save? What are you going to spend? And what are you going to give? And so kind of having her do that. My daughter is the spender naturally. So it's good for her because it keeps her balanced. You know, my son is naturally the saver. He's six, but he is the saver. He got, I don't know, for, I think it was, it was either his birthday, had to be his birthday or Christmas, but he had like a hundred dollars. I don't even know. I can't even remember. I think everybody just gave him money because they were like, no, we're not buying him any more toys because he has too many. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's like your daughter. He loves to draw. So he did get like some really nice um, drawing, but he got money. And I'm telling you, he held onto that money like forever, forever. I think he bought a pair of was it tennis shoes that he wanted maybe or something? I can't remember. He bought like one thing and then he saved his money. So him and his sister were going to school together and she would ask him, can I have like $2 for, for a snack? Cause he always had it. So we teach him, but just in, you know, a different way. And we kind of hold on to his money and then divvy it out, divvy it out to him. Um, but he's very careful. Like, Oh, I have $5. So if I want to drink, okay, so I'm only going to spend one dollar today. Like he's really good with that naturally. So thank God for that, because teaching him about money is a little easier than my 12 year old. (laughs) I love that. That's great. Those were some really good tips, too. I like the um, save, spend and give. That's good. I'm going to definitely use that with my daughter. 
So um, my daughter does chores. She does chores around the house. So, you know, we give her some money towards her chores. And Mm -hmm. I think that also teaches them you got to work hard for your money. So it teaches them how to clean, how to tidy up. And also, I did all of this work, and now I'm going to get a little reward for my work. So I think it works well. I had one mom tell me that she didn't think that paying her kids to clean up was good for her because they're supposed to do that. So she gives money for grades. Whatever works for you, whatever you want to give um, your kids, whatever you want them to do to earn some extra money, you know, that's what you do. But for me, I don't feel like my kids should be a slave to cleaning the house. I feel like they should learn to clean Mm -hmm. and they should clean and they should help out. But they it's nice to kind of earn a little, you know, here's this for that. Because when I was young, my mom used to make us clean the whole house every weekend. Me and my sisters would be cleaning the whole house. Like, and I hated that. And I get it. I was living there rent free, but I was a kid. I'm supposed to live rent free. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't want my kid to feel like she's the housekeeper. You know what I mean? So, but I get it, but I want her to also know that it is your responsibility to clean your room and to, and to help clean your bathroom when she's able to clean a bathroom properly. But for now, I just have her doing things like, you know, she'll help with the dishes. She'll unload, load the dishwasher. She'll clean the countertops. She helps me with preparing dinner. I'm like teaching her how to cook, like things like that. But she gets the money for like the sweeping and the loading and unloading because it's a lot of work loading and unloading a dishwasher. I mean, (laughs) I I get tired of it. So I could imagine, you know, a 10 year old like this is your job. Go do it every day. And it's just like. Ooh, yeah. So I'm, th- I'm that way ab- about it with you too. I, th- I think yeah. that yes, they live rent free, but I had them exactly. Right? They, didn't they, right. didn't, they didn't ask to live here rent free. It's Ex- not like they were like, "Hey, take me in." Thank you. Um, so with that, I don't. I you know, I don't feel like they have to pay their rent. I think they should be respectful of what they have, and so right. cleaning up. But I give money to for like helping out. Or my daughter now, she's like really, really creative. So I'm like, "Hey, cut this video up." Or oh. let me show you how to work in my business and I'll give you five dollars or whatever. Yes. You know, so to to so she does take some type of responsibility. Absolutely. Same here. So I do I sell lashes and um, makeup too in my other business. And my daughter comes Girl, out Girl, send me some lashes. Yeah, no, I'm serious. <laughs> I do Portia for real. We gotta have to talk. Girl. You gotta give me the website. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So um, my daughter comes out and she vends with me. So when and she is so good. Let me tell you, Portia, I am so like, like, even though I'm, I, I, I'm talkative and I'm outgoing when it comes to like selling and stuff, it's really not my thing. Like, mm-hmm. I just don't like pushing people to buy stuff. But my daughter, she's like, hi, come check out um, Bent Beauty. Look at these lashes. Look at this. D- this lipstick will look really great on you. Oh, are you married? You should buy some lipstick for your wife. I'm like, who is this? <laughs> she is so good. So when she does that, I definitely hit her off. Here you go, girl. You earned your money today. Thank you for coming out and helping mommy. So definitely that I do that as well. So, um, yeah, these are ways that we can really teach our children about money Also, sit them down sometimes and explain to them how bills work. My daughter took a course Mm -hmm. in the summer about, you know, um, managing a budget and stuff. And she learned about how much houses cost, how much money you have to make to, you know, run a household and take care of yourself. If you have children, how much it costs for daycare. You should have seen when she came home, she was like, oh, my God. Okay, so I'm going to be a judge because this is how much money judges make. Um, This is going to be my house. Me and my husband, we we need to have twins because with two kids, you get a discount at the daycare. I mean, she was like really into this class. Like she really understood like it's no joke. So, wow. Yeah. So I think it's really beneficial to even just sit down with them and say, oh, look, mommy got the insurance bill today. Do you know what insurance pays for? Let me show you. 
and explain to them mm-hmm. because it gives them some perspective and they kind of understand, oh, wow, didn't know y'all was paying all of that. So, right. Yeah. Right. It, it is when they're aware, we were listening to this podcast about wheels and, you know, leaving a wheel and, and doing all that stuff. And so um, we always say to the kids, like, uh, uh-uh, if you don't, if you don't act right, oh, you're not getting anything. And there's, there's some good stuff in there. So we're driving and she's like, um, so you have a will that's secure, right? Like we're good to go. If something happens, I, mean, I don't <laughs> want anything to happen to you and daddy, but in the event that something happens, we're going to be well off, right? We're going to be good. And oh so- my God. That's so funny. <laughs> but she was like, and then she was, then she wanted to get deep. Well, who am I going to go to? Like, who's going to manage our money? How, how am I going to be able to pay for college if you're like, and so just that I, I say that because that budget class opened their eyes. And mm-hmm. so I'm like, okay, I need to Google budget class for them. Because when we were talking about the wheels, she was interested because it had something to do with their life. Like right. it wasn't like something far off. It was like personal. Yeah. yeah. So the younger that we expose them to these things and teach them to the, teach them about these things, they are aware and awareness is good because that makes them, you know, want to learn more, do better and be more responsible as they get older. So that's basically what I kind of wanted to talk about and touch on. And I hope that you guys found this episode interesting and Sometimes words just escape me. I just can't think of the word that I'm looking for. But I hope you got... Let's say insightful. Insightful. That's probably the word I was looking for. Yes. Thank you. Insightful. I hope that this was insightful, interesting, and I hope that we gave you guys some tips on how to you know, get a hold of this situation while we can because we're all in the same boat. I am no exception. Um, you know, but it's just realizing and making the little changes so that we can catch things now and kind of, you know, make our kids a little bit more conscious of things so that they grow up a little bit better. (laughs) So Portia, thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoyed having you on this podcast. You were amazing. And thank you for having me. I had so much fun. Oh, good. I'm glad you had a good time. And I want you to tell everyone where they can check out your podcast. Absolutely. So it's Wake Up and Show Up with Portia Scott. You can find me on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, our iHeartRadio. So wherever you get your podcast from, uh, I am there on that platform. Okay. And are you on the gram? I am. So you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at I am Portia Scott. And Monday through Friday on Facebook Live, I do a live wake up and show up show uh, at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Awesome. 